Hello and welcome to this lecture on nanoimprint lithography. The basic process of nanoimprint lithography begins with a master mask made using some form of traditional pattern and etching manufacturing process. Nanoimprint lithography's unique advantage is that this mask is only patterned once using more expensive and complicated processes like electron beam lithography or optical lithography and then can be used to pattern a wafer thousands of times without the need of these machines. Once the mask is created, a resist is used and then pressed together with the mask and substrate in order to achieve successful pattern transfer. Once this is done, the wafer can go through etch and deposition and continue the manufacturing cycle. Let's discuss more on the advantages of nanoimprint lithography in order to motivate our investigation of nanoimprint processes. The key is absolutely in its price. Look at the chart in the bottom left. Compare nanoimprint with extreme ultraviolet, the most cutting edge process used in industry. The most expensive part of nanoimprint is the mask and the overall operating costs are far lower. And if you look at the other chart, you see that the price of the machine itself is far less expensive for nanoimprint as well. As a brief aside, the sub 10 nanometer level is often thought of as the practical limit for nanoimprint. And while this is somewhat true, the only real limitation of nanoimprint is the critical dimension of the mask you can make to be used for it. Let's dive deeper into the key processes of nanoimprint by discussing the three main types microcontact, thermal, and ultraviolet. Microcontact uses a flexible mask, which is really a negative of the original mask, to transfer an extremely thin film onto a gold-plated substrate. Films this thin are rarely seen in industry as the chance of defects is increased, but this technique is typically only used in schools or research labs. Microcontact is gentle, Thermal, on the other hand, is quite the opposite. Thermal nanoimprint lithography requires heating of a resist beyond its glass point and pressing the mask in with extreme pressure. This has the benefit that once cooled and separated, the pattern can withstand harsh manufacturing processes. Ultraviolet is the most used nanoimprint process and is what we will focus on the most. UV nanoimprint lithography machines have extremely advanced alignment technologies. Together with the low cost, lack of high pressure and temperature, and reliability of the process, this is a very popular choice. We will come back to this later, but we will start with a deeper look into each type, starting with microcontact. The process begins with a master mask, not shown in this picture. The mask would typically be silicon that was previously patterned and etched along with a thin passivation layer to help prevent strong adhesion in the following steps. PDMS is then poured over the mask, cured, and peeled away, creating a flexible imprint of the mask. This is then coated with a thiol-based ink solution. This is then pressed onto a substrate that has been plated with a thin layer of gold by a deposition process typically electroplating. The thiolate and gold form a self-assembled monolayer on the surface where the imprint is in contact with the substrate. A wet etch can be used to etch away the areas not protected by the monolayer. A benefit of this process is that because the imprint is a negative of the mask and the substrate is a negative of the imprint, mask and substrate end up being identical. In this way, this process is popular for copying patterns, so to speak. The flexibility of the PDMS can be useful for patterning non-planar surfaces, but it also results in very poor alignment for multi-patterning. Moving on to thermal. The first step is creating a silicon master mask. It is important that this be identical in composition to the substrate, since they will be heated together and have, must have identical thermal properties, such as coefficient of thermal expansion. A resist is spun on and developed to the substrate, and then the substrate and resist are heated until temperatures exceed the glass point of the resist. The mask is then pressed with very high pressure into the substrate and resist, 
and then everything is cooled and the mask is removed. Clearly, high aspect ratio patterns can be challenging here due to the force used to press them together. Now we will spend the rest of the time investigating ultraviolet nanoimprint lithography. The masks created for this process are very similar to those used in optical lithography. They are transparent and rely on phase shifting incoming light extremely precisely. Also, UV nanoimprint uses spray-on resist instead of spin-on for reasons that will be explained later. But for now, we will start by talking about the mask. First, electron beam lithography is used to pattern quartz and a chromium hard mask is applied before a fluorine-based etched. The etch depth is extremely precisely controlled to achieve total destructive interference in areas where no exposure is wanted at the surface. This mask can only can be used for tens of thousands of patternings. The only limit is residual buildup caused by particle, particle contamination over time because you use it with resist over and over again. Those familiar with the typical semiconductor manufacturing processes would typically assume that a UV-sensitive resist would be applied using a spin-on technique, but that is often not the case for nano-imprint lithography. The key reason for this is the lower viscosity of the resist used. Nano-imprint lithography techniques tend to require lower viscosity resists that can't be spun on effectively. The second most important reason for this choice is that photoresists must be extremely pure materials and can be expensive. Spinning it on wastes the majority of what was applied, so spray-on has clear cost advantages. Also, inkjetting can be manipulated to give engineers the ability to apply photoresist selectively, giving them another tool by which the process can be tweaked. Now, the most important part of any lithography process, but especially nanoimprint, could arguably be wafer alignment. The importance of this truly cannot be understated. A wafer used for advanced chip making can undergo thousands of patterning steps in its process flow. Each time this happens, the wafer must be aligned to the machine to something like within a third of half pitch, which is often only a few nanometers. I will note that often tolerances are not this slim in the back end of the line, but you get the point. UV nanoimprint lithography systems typically use three key subsystems to achieve alignment. The systems that actually move the wafer are the magnification actuator and wafer stepper. The stepper handles larger movements and also ensures that very little seismic noise makes it to the wafer stage. The magnification actuator makes extremely small movements in the XY plane possible through a controlled deformation of fused silica. All these adjustments are done in real time during the process. Of course, this requires extremely accurate measurements of the alignment. These measurements are accomplished by the interferometric Moyer alignment technique. This involves analysis of the interference patterns created by overlapping grids that are pre-drawn onto the wafer and substrate beforehand. Here you can see a simple demonstration of Moyer effect. You see that very small changes in the alignment of the grids leads to huge changes in the interference pattern between them. The grids used in IMAT are even more complex and tight and thus change even faster. Through analysis of these overlapping grids and the interference patterns, the system can achieve extreme precision in readings of alignment. The final thing we will discuss is throughput. This chart was created as a reasonable target for an ultraviolet nanoimprint lithography process, assuming a target of 20 wafers per hour, each having 100 fields to be patterned. As you can see, the total process time of the imprint is less than two seconds. This is very good. It's not exceeding that of cutting edge optical lithography, but it is very close to being on par with the fastest optical tracks. This is impressive given its much lower price. So it makes it very cost effective. That's all I have. Thank you for listening to this presentation.
These pictures are very interesting demonstrations that I was not a 